آؤز باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ما اصاب من مصیبت فی الارض ولا فی انفسکم الا فی کتاب من قبل ان نبرعہ ان ذالک علی اللہ یسیر بعد آؤز باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ الشَّيْءًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ وَعَسَىٰ أَن تُحِبُّ الشَّيْءًا وَهُوَ شَرٌ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ بعد اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ما يفعل اللہ بأذابكم ان شکرتم وآمنتم وَكَانَ اللَّهُ شَاكِرًا عَلِيمًا صدق اللہ العظیم My respected brothers and sisters In today's short talk I would like to address certain concepts and issues we are facing in this time all around the world There are few things we have to understand my brothers and my sisters, that everything happens around us, there is a reason for it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has hikmah in it. And our job is to put these dots together to understand the reason of whatever goes around us. This is a great blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we can decode these dots and we can understand the meaning of all that. The ayahs I have read in front of you from Quran, the first ayah says that nothing happens on this earth without the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is very easy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever happens around you or with you, everything is in the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and has permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The next ayah I read, that there are things happening around you that you may dislike something but Allah has khair for you in that. And there are things which you like, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shar in that thing for you. The third ayah which I have read, you know, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, which is from Surah Nisa, that what Allah will get by punishing you, what Allah will get by making you go through any hardship, Allah will get nothing. Rather, if you have Iman and you are shakir to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then not only that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has knowledge of it, but also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appreciates that. My brothers and my sisters. Musiba and hardship is that Allah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes away any of his nema, then it becomes hardship, it becomes zahma, it becomes difficulty. If Allah has given you and me seha, health, and if he takes away that seha, then this, this life becomes difficult for us. Same way Allah has given his bounty of, you know, mal to you and me. And if he takes it away, then it becomes difficulty and hardship for us. But for Mormon, the most important thing is that he has this firm belief that whatever Allah does has khair in it. Whatever goes around me 
it opens up windows of opportunity for person who has firm belief and faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With every difficulty, there is an ease. After every difficulty, there is a khair coming after it. And rather, we should have a belief that when difficulty starts, khair starts right with it. So as a moment, we have to look for those opportunities with positive mindset, my brothers and sisters, with positive mindsets. I want to also share with you this concept of sabr. Sabr is you know, Mawlana Abdul Hamid Farahi has written in, in one of his uh, book that sabr is not a sign of weakness. Sabr is not a sign of hopelessness. Rather, sabr is a name of quwwa. That you are strong. You have strong willpower. You are steadfast on the path you are walking. This is sabr. Sabar is that you are constantly walking on the path recommended by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sabar is what commands Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you and me to fulfill those commands. If I go through any difficulty, then I will take it with a smiling face. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden for me, and if I hold myself back from disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever difficulty I will go through in holding myself back from doing any sin, that difficulty and my patience on that is sabr. And there is another definition of sabr. That whatever bounties Allah has given you and me, Whatever status he has given you and me, I am contained. I am kane. I am happy with that. And from dunya perspective, I do not have a greed. hatta zurtumul maqabir. I do not have a greed like Prophet has mentioned in one of the hadiths that if Bani Adam has one Ahad mountain of gold, he will wish for the next because this is dunya that you struggle from one, you know, rank to another rank to another rank. Rather, I am happy where I am from dunya perspective. I do not have a greed of more and more and I hold myself. I keep myself contained and happy with that. Holding yourself, keeping yourself contained also comes in the definition of sabr. My brothers, there are three types of reactions. Whenever we come across any difficulty, any calamity, any mushkil, any hardship, there are three reactions. The first reaction is of complaint. And that reaction is from people who have no faith or their faith is very weak on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second reaction is patience. If I show patience on any difficulty, on any hardship, then this is a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he, clear, he wants to clean my record in this dunya. He wants to rectify all wrongs I have done in this dunya. So he wants to replace my sayyat, my sins in this dunya with goodness. But there is a third level. The third level is my brothers and my sisters that not only I show patience, but I have shukr and feeling of gratitude with that patience. Sabr and shukr together. This is the highest level. Yes, I will feel the pain as a human being. 
we have effects of emotions on us. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he did cry when he was holding his son Ibrahim, you know, in his hand. Because this is our weakness as a human being that we, sh- we, we get effect of emotions. We get effects of things happening around us. Nothing wrong in that. But I know whatever difficulty I am facing that I am not only going to show the sabr and patience, but I will be happy and contained in my heart that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have better reward for me on the day that we will all need that the most. And these are the people about whom we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only cleans their sins, their wrongdoings, but also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases their rank for the Akhirah. My brothers and my sisters, I want to share with you two a hadith of Prophet which really can help you and me out to understand and to benefit from the current situation we are facing. The first hadith is in which Prophet says that people are least appreciative of two blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are two blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the people neglect, ignore the most. The number one is health and number two is free time. Let me share with you another hadith and then inshallah I will go together in real detail about this both hadith. In the second hadith Prophet says for a moment if he wakes up in the morning and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him peace outside his home peace in his life and Allah has given health to his body peace in his body and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided him provision risk of that day it is like that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has presented to him all the ni'mah, all the bounties in this universe. So having peace that you can go out and you can do your work, you can do dawa, you can go and meet brothers and sisters, you can do whatever you want to do, you can go freely without any fear. Number one, number two, Allah has given you health. Allah has given you seha. Allah has given you this tawfiq that you can go out and do things. So you have health, you have peace outside and Allah has given you risk of that day. And to be honest with you, my brothers and sisters, maybe before I was not able to have this understanding of this hadith, the understanding I have today. That how great of a blessing is this of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I can go freely outside, that I have peace, no fear of any virus, no fear of enemy, no fear of weather, no fear of any calamity, no fear of any hardship. And how a great blessing it is that I am waking up in the morning with full health, that I am able to walk, I am able to talk. My body is feeling peace and I have, to, I have no worries about the risk of that day. I can appreciate this hadith more today. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given us so much but we neglected these two blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He had given me the help that I was, I was supposed to go and pray in the masjid but I did not go. Allah had given me health that I can fulfill the requirements as a Muslim. Allah had given me health that I can fulfill my task as a Muslim 
to go out and work for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah had given me health that I can go and serve the humanity. Allah had given me health that I can go out and reach out for Sulah Rahmi to my relatives. But I did not appreciate it the way I should have. The, I, the way I should have. The same way, my brothers and sisters, after this wake up call we have received from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through this virus, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has humbled us. We, are little, we have that age. We have this humility in ourselves. We are more connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala today. Our hearts are more inclined towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want to remind you, take advantage of your free time. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you health today. You never know what will happen tomorrow. Wallahi, as a medical doctor, I can tell you what I'm seeing things. That things could be way worse than what it is today. So enjoy the movement. This, this movement Allah has given you health and Allah has given you this opportunity of free time. Take full advantage of it. And always remember one thing. That things can get so bad that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take away these two opportunities also, these two blessings also away from you and me. So let's take advantage of it. Let's do our best to take advantage of this free time when our hearts are inclined towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's take advantage that we will be more connected to Quran. Let's take advantage that we will establish salah in our home. Even if I have only my wife at home, we can still do jama. Let's have designated area in our house. Let all the kids get involved. Let's have halaqa, the learning halaqa at home. Let's read Quran together. Let's talk about the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala together. Let's find a book. Select a book that we can spend some time on that book to have better understanding of our deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers, if you and me, we are just killing our time, we are wasting our time, we are just watching TV and we are just watching uh, you know, drama or picture, film or this and that and we are just wasting our time, that means we have not learned any lesson from this hardship we are going through. Let's take advantage of our personal development. There's so much available on social media that we can use it to our advantage to have self-development. My brothers and my sisters, remember also one thing. This is the time to connect with your extended family. This is the time that you may have not called your relatives, your family members for many months, for some people many years. But this is the time to reconnect with them. Before I will close, I want to say one more thing. That Mormon Muslim never gets scared from things. You know, we do our tadbir. We take all the precautions, but we are never scared. Because we have belief in taqdeer of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To me, only will happen what Allah has written for me. Allah has asked me to do my tadbeer that I will tie my camel. This is the teaching of my Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa But then I will rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and my sisters, this is what the teaching of my deen is that we should tie our camel and then we will rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my brothers. So we are not scared. If we go through our teachings of Islam, you know, this is not the first time whatever is happening is happening. There are incidents happen in our history. But look at the 
attitude of our sahaba abu baida bin jarrah when he was facing that calamity and he died in that calamity and muaz bin jabal was made in charge of the army and muaz was standing at the dead body of abu ubaida bin jarrah radhiyallahu ta'ala no and he says ya allah the mercy the rahma you have given to abu ubaida i want most of it for myself and for my family so he was looking at that calamity that hardship as a rahma of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the reason was my brothers that these sahaba prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has taught them a lesson that this dunya this worldly life is important that you should take your share out of it but your real success is the life hereafter so if i am taking away somebody's 5 dollar and he knows if he takes away my 5 dollar in return he is going to give me 1000 dollar my reaction will be different because sahaba knew that akhira is khairan wa abqa la aisha illa aisha al akhira wala nablu annakum bi shay min al khauf wal juu wa naqs min al amwal wal anfus wa thamarat wa bashir as sabirin alladhina idha asabatum musibatun qalu inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun ulaika alayhim salawatun mir rabbihim wa rahma wa ulaika humul muhtadu this was their reaction that we are happy with the qadr of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so when muaz bin jabal raised his hands for this dua in few days two of his sons including abdur rahman and two of his daughters and his wife and muaz himself all of them they passed away in that you know hardship of amwas amwas is a city close to jerusalem and there was a you know pandemic plague happened at that time and there were many big sahabas they passed away 25000 people in that small area they passed away during that but the sahaba's reaction was they were facing it with a smile on their face my brothers this is what our deen you know teaches us that yes we will take all the uh, precautions but we are not scared from death because death will not touch me until my time comes I will close with this take advantage my brothers promise to Allah subhanahu wa taala the ya allah yes i have done lot of negligence in my life i have gone away from your path i have done disobedience to you i was lazy for my salah i was lazy for my connection for quran but i promise to you ya rabbul alamin that if you will give me another opportunity i will take advantage of my health i will take advantage of the peace i will take advantage of all the bounties you have given me and i will go out and do the service to your deen ya rabbul alamin and today also brothers take full advantage of the situation not only that that you make your relationship with allah subhanahu wa taala better your relationship with quran better but reach out to people there are people around us they need help try to find the opportunity that who you can help help not necessarily always they want money saying few words of you know kalmatul khair with somebody this is also you know helping somebody talking to somebody sharing their pain giving your you know wise 
uh, opinion about certain things reach out to people let people know that you are available if anybody needs you i pray to allah subhanahu wa taala that he help help us out he help every living creature on this planet that we all can live through this calamity this pandemic we are going through this hardship we are going through and or and i pray to allah subhanahu wa taala when we come out of it we will we should be a better muslim a better human being a better family member a better person for community a better person for humanity wa akhiru dawana anil hamdulillahi rabbil alamin assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh